Hello Flickering Myth family and welcome to our channel. My name is EJ and in this video we are going to be recapping the summer horror movie season. Yeah, we've been filled with blockbusters, we've dealt with Oppenheimer and Barbie, but we've had a couple great horror films. Well, we've had one great horror film and a couple not so great ones. So in this video we are going to be discussing Insidious the Red Door, The Meg 2, The Trench, and talk to me. Goodness, what a movie season we've had this summer. Barbenheimer may have been the biggest conversation, but there's been quite a few interesting films. I liked Mission Impossible, I liked Haunted Mansion, the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was pretty great. I have reviews for those you guys can check out somewhere up here, but we are going to be discussing three major horror movies that came out over the summer. I will say in my rankings, I have missed two of them, Boogeyman and Cobweb. I just don't know if it's because the theaters are so packed this summer, but I could not find screenings and I live in like a pretty decent sized area. It was one of those, if you did not catch those on the weekend they came out, they were gone. So I am going to be focusing, like I said, on those three major releases from different studios, from different types of genres, but overall, it was fun. I, I Look, even with the ones I did not enjoy, I still had fun talking about them. I still had fun watching them with friends and getting into the spooky season. So enough of this whole little intro. Let's get into our first review. And it's for the worst of the bunch. We are talking about Insidious the Red Door. Insidious the Red Door, which I believe is like the fifth Insidious movie in that whole little franchise, is probably one of the worst movies I've seen this year, or at least one of my least favorites. It's going to be up there with Shazam, Fury of the Gods of like, wow, we released that from a director who's like pretty good. Uh, well, you know, a director who's trying out. Patrick Wilson is the director of the latest Insidious film, usually the star of them, also the star of the Conjuring movies. And boy, he, I, I had, I had hoped maybe, I think that's one, that, that, that's what let me down is I saw Patrick Wilson, I saw like the return of the Insidious movies, we haven't really had films like this in quite some time, you know, the, like the main ones like Conjuring, Insidious, they're just not released like almost every year like they were at one point, so I was kind of like, what are you gonna do? But boy, what a, a lackluster, what a unscary movie, nothing scared me, nothing kept me thrilled, chilled, enticed, usually when a movie's not like, oh my god, I'm so scared, I'm usually like oh that was a good jump scare nothing good was in this movie it's like a rehash of everything that's came before especially when the movie literally just rehashes things that came before it, it's it's like a it's like almost non-movie i felt like 30 minutes of this was just like do you guys remember the first insidious movie and i'm like sure kind of vaguely it just didn't hit me like the other ones did yeah it, it, this movie just kind of really let me down and not that i had high hopes for it but i was expecting something a bit more serviceable but like i said the scares weren't even good you can intercut scares from the other insidious movies into this one and i would have never knew the difference it's just so bland so generic actually i did think they put scares from other movies into this movie truly it is just one of those movies that it was like in one ear out the other completely forgot about it like the moment it was done and it, it's kind of disappointing, but hey, I like Patrick Wilson. Hopefully you direct something else that's outside of this franchise. Go to The Conjuring ones. Try that out. Who knows? You could either just be an not great director, or it could have just been this weak, insidious movie just wasn't what we were waiting for. The next one up is The Meg 2, The Trench. Meg 2, The Trench. Woo! Yay! Boy, what a bad movie. It's almost so bad it's good, but it's too soulless. It's too heartless for that. It almost felt like everyone on this movie was on autopilot. And look, I like the first Meg movie. I like shark movies. So I went in this one with some expectations, but I knew what I was getting into. I knew it was going to be a mess. Ben Wheatley being there as the director, I've interviewed him. I love this director. And The Earth is one of my favorite films I've seen of the last couple years. Truly a weird psychedelic experience. None of that was here. This was truly the one for them, one for me. This was the one for them. Ben said, baby, I need some money in my pocket so I can go make another weird horror film. Because everything was just so hollow, so bland, so generic. Same thing with Insidious. But at least the Meg had more like what the hell moments. At least it was like giving me a giant shark fighting like prehistoric things. Like, yeah, that was good. But that's, that's the little thing I have, though. There isn't enough Meg in this movie. It, it reminds me of, so when you go, uh, there was a Russo Brothers interview where they're talking about being in an airport. I believe it was the Russo Brothers. And they were saying, like, they saw literally somebody fast-forwarding through a, a superhero movie just to get to the big action scenes. Let's say I would just be fast-forwarding this movie just to find the good Meg scenes. 
baby, they're not here. Like if you fast forward to like 15 minutes, 35 minutes, 45 minutes, 55 minutes, you're probably going to run into characters speaking. The bland human plot of this movie, boy, like it makes me wish I was back into like a Jurassic Park human plot because goodness, this was so bland. The third act gets a little bit more fun when things are getting a bit more hectic. And I do like the Chinese like box office influence here. The like big budget movies that Chinese films usually have that like, wow, what the hell? It's so weird. It's so outlandish. It's so weird. That is there. It, you know, it gets funny. The mech suits are cool. The humor's there. The, the, the sci-fi elements are are really interesting because I definitely feel that's that weird Chinese backing of the movie that definitely they have a, a very interesting style over there. But still, it, it just doesn't hit the marks that it should. It doesn't scare me. It doesn't entertain me. It's just a bland shark movie and there's too many of them just to keep making more bland ones. There is nothing bland, generic, or been there, done that about Talk To Me. This movie is pretty damn Great. The Filippo brothers are, uh, wow, wow, what a debut. Even though I don't think this movie is perfect, there's some issues I have, mostly with the second act getting a bit just kind of bogged down. I was just waiting for the, the epic, you know, conclusion of this. And then when I got the ending of this movie, I was like, oh, man, that second act is even weaker now in retrospect. But yes, I, I like this. But, you know, as directors, this was good. I know that they can do even better. And that's like the most delicious part of this movie is you're watching filmmakers find themselves, find their voice, find what they think is scary. And boy, they found something because this movie like it, it was chilling like it was creepy it was weird they did what they needed to do i love the premise the the gen z seance -y vibe and like what they got into and what our our lead actress does you know where jason statham and patrick wilson are on all pilot like sophia uh wild i believe her name is whoa she is commanding she's scary she's good she gives us everything you would want from a leading performance the end of this movie is very very bleak i'm gonna warn you you know this is definitely not a fun horror film where i think like the meg can be a little bit more of a fun family vibe like everyone can go see this and enjoy it talk to me is a dark film it's a little heavy deals with some pretty dark concepts and I, I think it does get scary i think that's what the number one thing is there's an overall sense of dread like it's intense from the very great opening film to the first real attack of these demon forces from you know the beyond the grave kind of vibes you really get the oh my god they are not holding back and they never do again australian horror films have a wow we're talking about grief once again like goodness mothers specifically like uh, the Babadook like there's a lot of them what was it the one with, like uh, run Sarah run the one with um the chick from succession this year yeah there's a lot of the run rabbit run that was that one yeah there's a lot of these like wow should I go hug Australian people because what is going on it, again it is definitely there it's a heavier film it's fun but a24 in australia y'all really did something damn good with talk to me and gave the summer at least one spectacular horror film overall 2023 has been quite the year for horror films we've had some really good ones we've had some money makers talk to me was a good money maker i just bashed insidious but it's like the highest grossing horror film of the year and of the franchise like it is one of the better installments from that still think it's a garbage movie but good to see horror is making money especially in you know, the Barbie season where Barbie just made a billion, Oppenheimer's doing well, you know, all the other Disney movies are flopping and, you know, Spider-Verse is doing good. So there is things happening. So I'm glad that there's still money for horror and I'm glad horror fans are turning out for it because we've been fed good. Like little weird ones like Megan to the, you know, Scream entry to talk to me. We've gotten so much different horror vibes and it's definitely satisfied us as genre fans and it seems to be working for the mainstream as well. What is your favorite horror film of the year? What was your favorite horror movie this summer? Did you see Boogeyman or Cobweb and did I miss out on something good? Let me know down in the comments below. Share your thoughts. Make sure because I like to talk with you guys. Give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe all that jazz we have a lot to get into so let's talk about it right now